Now I'm no military man, but as a word fan, I can see there's something very wrong with the ranks we use for our army personnel. Etymologically speaking, they're all in the wrong order. Look at where the words we use in English come from, and you see we have chiefs being led by servants, big shots ranked below farm boys. It's a mess, but in this video, I'm going to put it right and potentially make some powerful enemies along the way. I'll come up with a new hierarchy we all can use based on the true meanings of military titles. And while I'm at it, I'll answer some of the other big linguistic questions like, why is Colonel spelt like that and not like that? And how are you actually meant to pronounce that? Lieutenant? Lieutenant? So fall in, eyes front, it's time for a tour of words of war, of tiers and titles as we rewrite the rankings and put people in their place. Welcome to another Rob Words. Now before we get into the full swing of the re-ranking, we've got to sort out some serious spelling issues. I wasn't sure where to start with this, so uh, the first one is just a placeholder. Quite literally, it's lieutenant or lieutenant. I'll get on to uh, that difference in a moment. Which is French for placeholder or holding, lieutenant. It means someone who takes the place or represents another person. They've basically had a job delegated to them by someone of a higher rank. But let's face it, the issue here isn't what or who that is. It's how you say it. There's basically no trace of it ever being pronounced in English with the usual anglicised versions of those two components. Lieutenant has never really caught on. Nowadays, it's the Americans who come closest with their pronunciation of lieutenant, which, though much more true to the spelling of the word to British ears, kind of sounds like the occupant of a restroom. In the armed forces of pretty much every other English-speaking country, the rank is pronounced lieutenant, which is Frankly baffling, isn't it? There's no F anywhere near that word. So why is it pronounced like that? Well, we simply don't know. It's one of the many unsolved mysteries of English. Because it's been pronounced like that, or something like it, in England for a long time, since the Middle English period, so the centuries just after William the Conqueror brought his fancy French words over to Britain around a thousand years ago. Various spellings of the words from the 14th and 15th centuries show how it was being said out loud. One of the most popular theories for why that F sound sneaked in there is that back in the Middle English period, the letters U and V were written exactly the same. So perhaps people saw lieutenant and read it as leave tenant. It seems plausible, doesn't it? But the boffins at Oxford English Dictionaries have rejected that idea, saying it does not accord with the facts. All right then. Another theory is simply that English speakers were mishearing how the French speakers were saying the word because of some quirk of old French pronunciation and inserting uh, phantom F there. Well, maybe. Anyway, by the time we get to the 17th century, English settled on the French spelling, but the Brits kept their weird pronunciation. So lieutenant slash lieutenant gets the first place on our new ranking, but where will it position at the end? Well, let's march on with this idea of spellings that don't match their pronunciation and look at our next rank. Colonel. What on earth is going on here? What's that L doing there? Well, the reason for the weird spelling is that the word was imported into English twice. Firstly, in the 16th century from French, when it was spelt like that. Notice anything? No stupid extra L. And it's from that spelling that we get our pronunciation. Take coronel, add a few centuries of lazy English speech and shifting fashions, and you end up with colonel. But our spelling of colonel comes courtesy of the Italians. Not long after importing the French word, English scholars got really into translating Italian military texts. Influenced by the Italian version of coronel, which was colonello, uh, they started using a spelling of colonel that included an L instead of the R. In the meantime, the French had also taken on the Italian L in the middle because they realised it was more true to the original meaning of the word. 
Kernel derives ultimately from the Latin columna, meaning column. A kernel is the leader of a column of soldiers and is exactly the sort of person who might occasionally need a placeholder. So if we look at our ranking, I'm going to pop Colonel above Lou slash Lieutenant. OK, moving on, the next stop as we meander through military nomenclature is another weird looking word. It's Sergeant. Again, the spelling doesn't really match up with how we say it, but the spelling does give us a clue to the original meaning of the word, because we have another word in English that comes from the same Latin root and which we spell in a very similar way. In English, we have sergeant and we also have servant. Both the word sergeant and servant come into English from Old French and both of them derive from the Latin word servire, meaning to serve. In Middle English, the word could apply to anyone who was servile, but its usage to mean a common soldier really caught on. These days, it can take over a decade of service to reach the rank of sergeant, which obviously makes no sense when all they are is basically a lowly servant. So that's why sergeant is definitely going to the bottom of our rankings for now. And while we're at it, let's put sergeant major in their place. Major comes from the Latin word for bigger or greater. It sits alongside magnus, meaning great, and maximus, meaning greatest. So a sergeant major is, etymologically speaking, just a greater or more important servant, hardly worthy of a higher rank than a column leader or a placeholder. So sergeant major, or just major as it's sometimes known, is going here. Now there's nothing too controversial there, I believe that's pretty much how it actually works in the British Army these days. But I am about to blow that all out of the water, because in real life a major outranks a captain, but etymologically speaking, you can forget it. The word captain again comes to English from French in the 14th century, but you can trace it back to the Latin word caput, which means head. It's the same word that gives us capital, chapter, decapitate, and even by more complex means, chief. So if captain means head, where else can it go in our rankings? But at the top, that's quite the promotion. And do you know who else is getting a promotion? The corporals. Don't be fooled by the look of that word. It doesn't come from the same place as corporal punishment, for example, which refers to punishment of the body, or the word corpse, which just means body. The word corporal, in the sense of service personnel, also comes ultimately from the Latin word caput, via the French caporal, and also means head. So although corporal normally slots in behind sergeant as well, I'm boosting it up to the upper echelons to turn a military phrase. Next up, one of the more vague military terms, general. There's no special trick with the word here. The word general means what it does to you and me, you know, sort of common, applicable to all. It's from the Latin generalis. So as a title itself, it doesn't really make sense. You are a general what? A general what? That's because it's actually not the full title. It's the shortening of Captain General, which is one of those weird titles where the adjective comes after the noun, like uh, Attorney General or Procurator Fiscal, rather than just being General Captain. So a general is in fact a general head, which I'm taking to be more important than just a run-of-the-mill head. So I am popping the general at the top of my rank. Right, we've just done head, so now let's do privates. So what's so private about a private? Well, this is a simple but nevertheless satisfying one. The title harks back to the medieval British term private soldiers, which refers to fellas who were hired by some fancy nobleman who was hoping to wrangle his own army for whatever purposes. They were private as opposed to working for the monarch. Nowadays, it's the lowest rank but there's a lot of them and they could definitely still beat me up. Plus a soldier is you know, better than a servant, no matter how major the servant is, isn't it? So I am popping the privates there. 
Okay, let's finish on a biggie, the top rank in many armies, the Field Marshal. So on the face of it, it looks pretty solid. They are the Marshal of the Field, the battlefield. They are in charge. It's only when we dig a little deeper into the word Marshal that things start to take a turn for the worse. Do not confuse this word with this word, because this type of Marshal could hardly be more impressive. The name comes from the Roman god of war. It means belonging to Mars. Powerful, right? But we're not talking about this marshal. We're talking about this marshal. And that means something altogether different. It means one who looks after horses. They're not even a servant to another person like a sergeant, but they're a servant to a horse. I think that puts them way down there. Oh dear, that's not going to go down well with some pretty powerful people. So there we have it, my new military order, based entirely on what those words actually mean. Congratulations to those who got a hefty promotion, commiserations to those who've slipped down a peg or two. Leave your approval or objections in the comments below. And to my military friends, remember this is just a bit of fun. I'm sure your stripes have been well earned and hard won. Thanks for watching. Please click like and subscribe and watch one of my other videos too. Until next time, do take care.